What's going on guys? Rob from Heroes Avenue and today I want to talk about uh, two big scenes in two big comic book movies. Um, one of them has to do with Avengers Infinity War so if you have not seen this, that movie that uh, this is your warning. Please click off the video, check it out when uh, you've seen the movie. Don't know why you haven't seen it yet by the way. Um, so uh, what I want to do is uh, talk about yes the, the famous Martha scene in Batman vs Superman and the Star-Lord vs Thanos screw up that happened in Avengers Infinity War. So I posted this little image uh, last night on our Heroes Avenue Instagram. It was a poll and it asked which scene pissed you off more and to my surprise 65% of our uh, followers on uh, Instagram voted for the Peter versus Thanos scene which totally surprised me because I know how much hate Batman vs Superman got after it was released especially the Martha scene now let's just go ahead and break it down because I'm gonna need you guys to vote I want to see what uh, our YouTube followers think about this topic uh, in the comments below so before you vote let's lay out what went down uh, in each movie so Avengers Infinity War saw all of our favorite heroes against Thanos and his quest for the Infinity Stones. Obviously in the movie and in the trailers that we've seen, Star-Lord has this plan uh, to, to uh, get the gauntlet off of Thanos essentially. Um, at least in the movie he refers to it as his plan. So um, in the movie, uh, obviously we saw a tremendous sacrifice that Thanos had to pay to get the Soul Stone and that was his beloved daughter Gamora and obviously the relationship between Gamora and Peter has been building through two movies now and if you want to include uh, uh, Infinity War through three movies now and uh, obviously G Guardians of the Galaxy uh, Volume 1 took the whole world by surprise never expected to be the hit that it was and it really had a lot of heart to it and especially uh, the relationship uh, between Gamora and Peter Quill, Star-Lord. It was just amazing, such a fun ride, and I actually enjoyed Volume 2 almost as much, probably not quite as much, but it was really good in my opinion, had a great villain, but I think it did a lot to further their, uh, you know, uh, our uh, attachment to their relationship. So coming, in, coming into Avengers Infinity War, ton of characters, not enough time to really establish all the relationships, but I think the Rooster Brothers did a great job. Uh, so basically after Thanos commits his, uh, his atrocious act of killing his daughter for the Soul Stone, we see him face off against uh, a team that included Drax, Iron Man, Doctor Strange, Mantis, Spider-Man, um, and um, Star-Lord. Essentially as Mantis pops up out of nowhere using one of Doctor Strange's portal, we see Mantis hop onto Thanos' head, kind of mind controls him and uh, kind of restrains him. Then we get Peter, Peter Parker, I mean Spider-Man, we get Spider-Man and Tony Stark wrestling the gauntlet off of Thanos. And for a quick second, we are, we are thinking, oh man, are they going to actually get this gauntlet off of him? And of course, you know, uh, of course something had to happen. Something got to give. So we get uh, Thanos kind of admitting that he killed Gamora because Mantis talks about how he's in great, great anguish and he had felt a great loss and um, actually Nebula was there, I'm missing Nebula. Nebula mentions, oh he, he, he killed her and Star-Lord starts to freak out. Oh where's Gamora? What'd you do to him? What did you do? And sure enough Star-Lord screws up his own plan even though you had Tony Stark trying to restrain him, trying to tell him cool, cool off because we are about to get this gauntlet off of him. So um, of course to, for the sake of um, movie pushing the story forward Star-Lord screws up the plan, starts hitting Thanos, and basically it becomes one of, you know, it's, it's his fault why the plan fails. And when I was watching that scene in the theaters, I was absolutely cringing, so pissed off at Star-Lord, one of my favorite characters in the MCU, and I, I just couldn't believe it, like, man, this guy was talking about having a plan, having Drax restrain himself earlier in the movie, then he can't restrain himself when they are about to win, about to get that gauntlet off of Thanos. So, really annoying. Um, when I watched it the second time, you know, I was a little less annoyed because I knew it was coming, but when I first watched it, I was like, no way, don't do this. Oh my gosh. I was totally like, I was totally annoyed and pissed off at that scene. So that brings us to the Batman vs Superman Martha scene. So when this movie came out, obviously it was expected to do tremendously well. But of course, because of the lousy critical reviews and audience reviews, 
I think it did not do as well as it was supposed to. The second week drop off in the box office was was huge and word of mouth was just all around not good for this movie. Um, even though we have diehard fans like myself who absolutely love the movie with all, with all of its flaws, right? So of course a lot of movies have flaws but I still love the movie. I'll still defend it to this day. Um, but I understand why people did not like the Martha scene. I have to admit, watching that scene, you know, I think Ben Affleck, tremendous actor, could have done so much better in delivering his line. Um, I just remember how cringeworthy that name, uh, the, uh, the line was delivered. Why did you say that name? I was just, oh my gosh. I was, some people were laughing in the theater when I watched it. I, you know, I was totally into the movie and I totally got what Zack Snyder was trying to do. Because if you think about it, um, this was our introduction to Batman in the DC universe, or DC film universe, DC EU, whatever you want to call it. So this movie opens up with a montage, one of the greatest montages I can remember. Um, of course, Zack's trademark is these opening montage scenes that kind of set the groundwork for what's to come in the movie. And we see, of course, the scene where Bruce's parents get killed. And I thought it was done very beautifully, overlaid with, um, you know, the dialogue uh, from Ben Affleck's uh, Bruce Wayne character. And I just thought it was done very well in Zack Snyder's stunning vi visual fashion and I just thought it was great. So if you think about it, how many times did we see and hear Martha uh, throughout uh, Batman vs Superman? We see him in the opening montage. Um, we see him when he's um, in the cemetery kind of mourning and then right before he goes into battle with Superman he talks about his parents and his family's legacy. So when at the end of the movie uh, that Mar the name Martha triggered Bruce to stop that killing blow on Superman. I was all in. I was I was all in for it. I thought, what a great segue uh, to bring it all home. You know, take a theme that is very apparent throughout the movie and uh, have it be the trigger for these guys to uh, become a a team. So, you know, I I definitely was not. I was definitely not opposed to what happened in the Martha scene. I just thought it could have been executed a little better on Ben Affleck's side because it was a little cringeworthy the way he said it. So there it is, guys. We've got two cringeworthy type moments in two big action superhero movies from two opposing opposing uh, uh, companies in DC and Marvel. So I want to know what you guys think. Which scene did you find more cringeworthy? Let me know in the comments below. Did you think... The Martha scene was more cringeworthy, or did you think the Star Lord versus Thanos scene was more cringeworthy, or which one of pissed you off more? Because uh, what I saw on our Heroes Avenue Instagram surprised me a lot, and I want to know what you guys think. So uh, please give this video a like if you can, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace.